What is up, cool kids? I'm Cool Trainer Gavin, and if you're like me, then you've probably wondered at some point, what would a Pokemon skeleton look like? Like, it looks so weird from the outside, but what would it look like on the inside? Actually, you're probably a normal human being and don't think about these things, but luckily, that's why scientists are here to do that thinking for you. Yes, this is the start of our new series, Pokenatomy, where we take Pokemon and... I sort of build a skeleton based on what I think they would look like personally as a scientist. As much as you can apply science to Pokemon, because you really can't. Because then things start, to things start to fall apart quite quickly. But we're going to do it anyway. So our first lucky contestant is, of course, Zangoose. So with that, let's get into it. For this whole series, I'm going to be getting inspiration from a couple different places, including um, the Pokédex, as well as Bulbapedia, because under the biology part of Bulbapedia, there's a lot of good information. So let's take a look at what that says. According to Bulbapedia, Zangoose is a bipedal Pokémon resembling a cross between a mongoose and a cat, which makes sense because it is the fat, the fat carrot, <laughs> the cat ferret Pokémon. Although it is classified as a bipedal Pokémon, it usually walks on all fours. That is true in the anime, although never once in the game do you ever see that. I want to say that, actually, I take that back. I think that it walks on all fours when it's behind you in um, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I want to say that's true, but I'm not sure. But I'm not sure. Its fur is mostly white with deep red scarlet markings on its face, chest, and forepaws. It has two long black claws on its forepaws and pink paw pads on its hind feet. It has pink ears, sorry, pink eyes, long ears, and a small red nose. When it opens its mouth, two sharp fangs can be seen on its upper jaw. There are small tufts of white fur on its shoulders and has a large fluffy tail. Zangoose is bitter enemies with Seviper, which, had its bat which it has battled against for generations. It has claws. Its claws are its best weapons and can be used for its former signature move, Crush Claw. It lives in grassy areas. So that's the biology part of Bulbapedia. Well, under the trivia, there's also usually some more um, things. So right here it says Origin. Zangoose is based on a mongoose, a cat like carnivore. No, they're not really cat like. Oh, Peter needs to be fixed. That is well known for its ability to hunt and kill venomous snakes. It also bears resemblance to the Angora and Persian cat breeds. They're both very fluffy. Um, the rival, the rivalry, rivalry it shares with the Viper is based on the relationship between cats and mongooses towards snakes. So with those things in mind and looking at both all of the sprites that Zangoose has had over the generations, as well as the skeletons of cats, ferrets, and mongoose, mongooses? Did I already say that? Mongooses? Mongeese? I don't know the plural of mongoose. I think it's mongooses. But regardless, um, looking at all the skeletons, which I'll throw up on your screen, it would be very hard to just take them and put them upright, because it just, it would not work skeletally. Their pelvis doesn't work like that. As well as, especially with the ferret, its spine does not work like that. So, what I had to do, with I tried to keep as many cat or ferret body parts on the skeleton as I could, but being that humans are really the only bipedal animals, pretty much, in the animal kingdom, uh, I did take a lot of parts from uh, the human skeleton as well. So with all that, let's see what we have. So here is our Zangoose skeleton sort of overlaying with a translucent image of a Zangoose. Uh, I think that's the official Ken Sugimori uh, art for Zangoose. Now looking at it, you can see that I did only do the right uh, forearm and leg, uh, fo forelimb and hindlimb, those are the words, forelimb and hindlimb of Zangoose, just because things um, tend to get a little tricky when you try to just mirror image bones, especially with Zangoose's left foot there. Uh, the toes don't line up and the way that the toes are on this don't really work with the cat bones that I had uh, available for the image realistically, but it would look basically like a mirror image of this as well as the arm. Um, as you can see, it is mostly a human skeleton with the exception of the uh, leg, the tail, and the skull. Um, but. It's, it, it's very hard to, like I said, transpose a skeleton from being quadrupedal to being upright. I also think it's very important to look at how long Zangoose's front limbs are compared to its hind limbs. 
because I, I think just the ratio of four limbs to hind limbs leads me to believe that Zangoose would have spent a lot of its time standing upright as opposed to being quadrupedal. That as well as if, like Bulbapedia said, its claws are its main weapon, I would think that it would want to keep its claws off of the ground because there, even if it did have retractable claws like on its feet, which I suspect it probably did, um, I, I don't see any way where Zangoose could have retracted its huge, you know, the two huge claws on its hands up into its hand because then the, the, there's just no space for it at all. Unless it walked potentially on its knuckles, which has been seen before in different fossil animals that I could go into, but I'm not going to. Um, which that is a theory, but also just looking at Zangoose's knuckles, it doesn't seem like that would be able to, to have happened. I also double checked Zangoose's moveset, and it doesn't learn any moves whatsoever that revolve around like biting. So because of that, I did reduce the size of Zangoose's, um, like the canine teeth on the cat skull that I used for this skeleton. Um, but I think the skeleton would be pretty spot on because cats, unlike dogs, they don't use their sense of smell very much, which is why they don't have, you know, such a long pronounced nose. Instead, what they use for most of their, um, most of their senses is their eyes and their ears, which is why cats have such a large eye socket. Um, and I believe that this would also be true for Zangoose as well. And this, uh, being bipedal would also help Zangoose out for that as well, be being higher up so it would be able to see more. It's hard to see because they're in the back, but I also gave Zangoose reasonably large shoulder blades. Now, shoulder blades are where some of your arm muscles attach to. Um, so giving Zangoose more skeletal surface area for its muscles to attach would give it uh, stronger muscles and be able to hit things harder, which Zangoose, Zangoose is pretty known to do. And while we're talking about hitting things, looking at Zangoose's hand, um, it is virtually accepted that every single vertebrate has five digits. Whether it is a whale in its, um, in its like dorsal, not dorsal, that's the back, in its pectoral fins. If you look at the bones in their fins, they have five essentially fingers because all vertebrates stem from a common ancestor and the common ancestor developed five digits so that has just always been carried through uh through all the generations you know from almost 400 million years ago from when the first vertebrates came onto land um so looking at zangus's hand i decided to you know instead of just giving it three fingers because it does have a small thumb instead of just giving it two long fingers for the claws on and the thumb i decided to fuse the uh its fingers like this i think that would give it you know sturdier bones to um to you know hit things with it would provide more strength uh for the claws themselves as well so that is zangus's skeletal biology i know this has probably been kind of rough i'm not used to scripted vi videos very much yet um but hopefully they should get better as we go let me know what you guys thought of this and if you happen to know anything about biology let me know what you would think about uh you know how zangus's skeleton might look uh, if you have any suggestions for pokemon to do in the future please drop those down below um keep in mind that we are only going to be doing vertebrates so no bugs no, um basically it has to be a mammal a reptile a reptile a bird or a amphibian those are the only ones we're going to be doing because fish skeletons pretty much all look the same bugs don't have skeletons and i don't mess with plants because they don't have bones um but thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video as much as i did please 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 like and or subscribe follow me on twitter and twitch at cool trainer gav and until next time smile later